Professor, uh, could you tell me something about your um, your situation? Uh, you are a very well-known uh, scientist in the world, and we have a conference about the COVID-19, about the alternative approach or the holistic and integrative approach. And we would like to, to know something about your uh, scientific research. How is it now and uh, what is your problem? Uh, as a matter of fact, I have no research on, on COVID-19. No research at all because, you know, I, I'm a nanopathologist. Nanopathology is the, the, the discipline, the study of the pathologies induced by, by micro nanoparticles. Uh, and those pathologies are really a lot. So you have cancer, you have uh, um, myocardial infarct, you have uh, uh, thromboembolism, you have uh, some, some pathologies of, of the fetus because those particles can can go freely from mother to fetus and so you can have abortion, you can have fetal malformations. Um, well, lots of, of different pathologies. One of the, of the pathologies they can induce is, is uh, a thrombosis. Because we demonstrated about 20 years ago, we demonstrated, and when I say we, I mean my wife, Dr. Antonietta Gatti, who is a physicist and a bioengineer, and, and myself, we uh, demonstrated with uh, um, electron microscopy observations that uh, those particles uh, can, can uh, transform uh, a, a soluble protein uh, into a solid protein in, in the blood and, uh, and uh, that causes the formation of, of uh, thrombi. Uh, those thrombi, if they are in the, in the venous uh, section of the circulatory system, uh, flow, go directly to, to the lungs, uh, like all, all venous blood does. And uh, this is, in, in, in our opinion, the case with COVID-19. Uh, in our opinion, but it's, it's just an opinion because we didn't have the chance to uh, observe any, any sample in spite of what had been, uh, in spite of the agreement we had with, with the hospital, we didn't, they didn't send us any, any uh, sample. So what I say, what I'm saying now is just an opinion and it must be regarded as an opinion. So with, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, with scientists, opinion, opinions do not have a huge value. They are something you think, you, you think it, it likely, you think it is possible, but you don't have any evidence for mm. it. So, what happened, in our opinion, is that uh, the, the uh, pathologies and the deaths are due not to, uh, to uh, an inflammation of the pulmonary uh, tissue, so not, uh, they're not due to uh, pneumonia, but to uh, pulmonary thromboembolism. The reasons are more than one. First of all, uh, the, uh, the areas where the pathologies have been more evident and more numerous are the areas that are more polluted. More polluted means that there are more, more uh, micro nano particles present in, in the air, in the atmosphere. If you look at the, the pictures taken with uh, satellites, by satellites, you can see that, uh, that uh, um, pollution very, very clearly. 
So there is a, a, a very close coincidence between uh, deaths and, and the, uh, the territories where those particles were more present. Then there is another thing. And the other thing is that the same territories, in the same territories, uh, a huge number of, uh, of uh, um, uh, flu vaccinations have been performed. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, vaccinations uh, induce inflammation because they must do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we discovered, we started 16 years ago um, studying and, and, and analyzing vaccines. And now we have analyzed 45 different kinds of, of vaccines, so hundreds of samples. They are all polluted by micro and nanoparticles. You, you find stainless steel, you find lead, you find uh, uh, very, very unusual uh, alloys. Those alloys come, we think, from, from uh, industrial pollution. And the problem is that those uh, pollutants are not, uh, are not eliminated by the final product because nobody checks the, uh, the products, the final product. Unfortunately, vaccines are not not analyzed, are not checked. So they are, I must say, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but they are dirty, very, very dirty. Mm. So you have, uh, you have pollu pollution, and pollution it has an inflammatory, uh, re uh, induces inflammatory reactions. Uh, we demonstrated that, and induces thrombosis. Then you have vaccines. They also induce uh, inflammations and they also induce thrombosis. As we demonstrated, we have pictures taken uh, with uh, uh, our electron microscope, which is a very, which is a particular one. It's an environmental electron microscope. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then, then, uh, you combine those reactions together uh, and, and, and you have pollutions from, from the environment and pollution from vaccines, plus the inflammatory uh, reactions of vaccines and of pollutions, because uh, in, in, in the air, in, pollu in the in polluted air, you don't have only micro nanoparticles, but you have dioxins, you have furans, you have uh, 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 sulfuric acid, you have nitrogen, nitrogen compos uh, composites, and, uh, you have all, all kinds of different um, pollutants. Then, then you have the virus, the virus itself. We don't know much about that, that virus, but it's not impossible that that virus has an inflammatory, uh, induces inflammatory reactions as well. We don't know. Nobody knows. What we know is that pollutants do. Uh, and and uh, so what happened is that you have the formation of uh, uh, thrombi. Those thrombi migrated to the lung circulation, and they cause pulmonary thromboembolism, something very, very common in a way. Uh, in our opinion, the big mistake that has been uh, made was forced ventilation. Because if you, if you push air, if you push oxygen into the lungs, that oxygen cannot be carried by the blood simply because no blood arrives to the lungs. So, uh, so pumping air, pumping 
uh, oxygen into the alveoli is not only useless, but it is harmful because it, it causes uh, uh, it causes uh, an, another inflammatory reaction and and uh, an oxidation oxidation in of of, of the tissue. Mm -hmm. So you kill the patient that way. You kill you simply kill the patient because the patient cannot carry the the the, the patient's blood does not arrive to the lung. So there is no uh, no oxygen available for the cells, mm -hmm. and you have your lungs full of oxygen, which is which cannot be used by the by the blood by the body by the organism mm -hmm. so in our opinion a big big mistake has been made that's all i can say so what we proposed uh, to uh, a hospital uh, the hospital where the highest number of cases uh, has been uh, has been counted the hospital of bergamo a, a city in, in northern Italy. Yes. We proposed uh, to take the the uh, biopsy uh, samples and analyze them. Analyzing them, we uh, and biopsy samples of the lungs, of the thrombi, and also of the brain. Because speaking with the uh, the doctors of that city of, of Bergamo, they told us that they suspected the presence of neurological reactions as well. So we are very curious to see if something wrong happened with the brain. So what we proposed was to, to analyze uh, the pulmonary tissues, the brain and the, and the uh, thrombi. So the, the hospital received the money from a, a private uh, group Mm -hmm. received, received the money to pay for the expenses uh, of those analyses, mm -hmm. but they, once they had the money, they refused to send the sample the samples. So, uh, 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 any hypothesis is up to you. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have the money. If you have the samples, but if if you refuse to uh, have those samples analyzed, analyzed, you must have a reason to do that. Yeah. Uh, think of it, and and and, and draw your conclusions. Hmm. Interesting, professor. Hmm. And uh, no any possibility in the future to you haven't uh, any uh, good news in this field to do to you to do your uh, research. Yeah. The, the good news is that you you can treat in, in again in my opinion and I worked in that field uh, uh, thrombosis and thromboembolism I worked 20 years in that field if uh, as I think, it is a, uh, a pulmonary thromboembolism. You treat it like any thrombosis with heparin. With heparin, if the thrombus has not been formed, but when the thrombus has already formed and the thrombus is organized, uh, heparin is of no use. So you have to use urokinase. But this is it's not a discovery of mine. We know that. We, we have known that all along. We, we knew that 50 years ago. Hmm. So if you just use heparin at the beginning or urokinase when thromboembolism has already uh, occurred, you solve the problem. You don't have to, to, uh, to uh, send your patient in, in to, to the hospital. You can do that at home if you want. Because we have another problem. The other problem is that in Italy, Italy uh, has 60 million inhabitants. We have 135 uh, cases of, uh, of death 
every day due mm -hmm. to infections contracted in hospitals. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, that is a, a, an official statistic, 135 people die every day because hospitals are simply dirty. So mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you go to a hospital without any need, you run the risk of contracting an infection mm -hmm. because you have 135 people who die every day, but many more uh, grow sick, many more. And people who die one, two, three months after they have been uh, dismissed from the hospitals, they are not counted. So we have no trace of those people who die uh, later. Hmm. So, yeah. uh, in the hospital, if you don't need to, it's dangerous. That that I don't, don't know about Hungary. I know Hungary only similar tourists, <laughs> but uh, and, and I, I like it. I like Budapest very much, but uh, I don't know it from the professional point of view. But Italy has that problem. Mm -hmm. As and as to uh, as far as as the virus is concerned, we have uh, natural uh, anti-viral uh, uh, drugs, which are very efficient. One is ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Vitamin C uh, intravenously is very very efficient against any kind of virus any kind. Uh, I know that a big pharma, the big uh, pharm uh, pharmaceutical companies don't like people to know that uh, uh, fact. Mm. But it is a fact. Mm. One gram of, of uh, vitamin C intravenously <laughs> is, uh, performs miracles much mm. better than uh, uh, the, the majority of antiviral drugs mm. and another another uh, very inexpensive inexpensive uh, uh, way to treat a virus is ozone mm -hmm. if you take the blood from from a patient if you, if you take for example 300 uh, cc of, of, of blood and you put ozone in that mm. in that bag containing 300 grams of, of, of blood and you re-infuse that blood to mm. the patient you have a, a, a anti, an antivirus uh, uh, reaction which is excellent and that's absolutely inexpensive inexpensive but nobody does nobody does that mm. nobody even, even tried mm. in my opinion uh, it is worth at least trying that.